Janet from the Ed and Janet uh, show here and today we're with Anne. Everybody probably in the club knows her. She's a fabulous gardener and a vegetarian who eats mostly what she grows on a property and she's very generous with her knowledge and with her plants and seeds and she's also a good buddy of mine. So Anne, please tell us about your garden. How would you like to start? Well, uh, where do we start? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> front yard is basically for the soul. Flowers, backyard yeah. is basically for the body, food. Right. And well, um, except for your big greenhouse I've here. I've got <laughs> quite a bit of food in, in the front now too, because Great. Uh, food is the most important part for me now. I have to slow down with the ornamental stuff and just concentrate on food. Mm -hmm. But I've done a few things different this year. Uh, I had pole beans here for two or three years and they didn't do, I mean, not so good at, to plant the same stuff all the time. Yeah. So I put my cucumbers here today and I, I take the side shoots out and then they go up. And um, I think that will work. I, unfortunately, I put them out much too early and they were cold and shivering and didn't really grow, but now they're growing. And there's hanging one down hanging there, it's coming. Very good. And so that's new this year. And in the greenhouse, uh, there's not much new. It's always the same. But the uh, tomatoes are up, up, up on the roof almost. So that is, um, that's good. But and I have some really odd things happening this year. Some of my tomatoes, which are all heirloom, must have cross-pollinated last year. Uh... And some of the seeds were obviously not what they should be. And I have some weird things in there. Uh, but they're all nice, but not what they should be. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Well, we'll they see. all look good in there, your peppers and everything. Well, so. the peppers are really, really slow this year. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. And they had a lot of, of aphids and stuff on them. So I sprayed my sugar peroxide solution to get rid of the aphids. That works quite well. Yeah. And, and of course your lemon tree. Did you want to tell us a little tree, about yeah. the lemon tree? I harvested already about 20 this year and now there's quite a few left. The reason why I covered this is last year, even without the corona, somebody stole my lemons. Oh. And so, yeah, uh, suddenly all the ripe ones were gone one morning. <laughs> I mean, hey, really. And so I thought this year, with all these food shortages, I'd better cover them up so people wouldn't see them. <laughs> so that's why they're behind the curtain. But otherwise, uh, uh, normally I don't do this, but I thought it might be a good idea this year to cover them up a little. And you just cover this in the winter time? In winter, I uh, put a double layer of, of uh, remy around. And I had the whole tree is full of Christmas lights. It's all the, the big ones with the big bulbs that are not uh, that big heat. And if it gets below three degrees minus, I put the lights on. And then that keeps it warm enough. I mean, the tree could probably handle more cold, but the fruit cannot. And since right. fruit grows also the winter, I have to protect the fruit so that it wouldn't. Well, it's a big tree. I know you I get a lot of lemons. Uh, freeze to death. Yeah. But yeah, all over all, uh, it's a good little tree. Unfortunately, I have to prune it always very, very bad because it's, you know, under the window. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be much, much bigger, of course, but I have to keep it short, poor thing. <laughs> yeah. But it's okay. It's, it's, this year it's doing well. It has a lot of flowers on it. It's blooming now again. Yeah. yeah, well, that peach tree is a bit of a funny guy. It's Arctic peach, and I don't know why I bought this back then. It sounded good, I suppose. And in February, he thinks it's summer, starts blooming. Well, there's not a single bee out there. So every year I go with my little brush and do my pollination work myself. Sometimes over lunchtime when it's warm and sun shines and it might be the odd bee. But normally I have to do it myself because it blooms so early. So, but this year, I don't know, I got quite a few and a lot had set actually but many many fell down and I'm not sure why that is I haven't figured it out but I'll have about ah, 20 30 or so last year I had over 80 so that was much better <laughs> yeah not the same every year that's okay <laughs> when a, a peach tree gets leaf curled you take the leaves off every every day in spring 
I pick all the stuff out. It comes right out. I break the whole thing out, and then they make new leaves, and they are normally okay. And what do you do with the old leaves? Oh, garbage. Not in the compost. They're quite contagious. And the thing is, you have to make sure you get definitely the ones on top, because that fungus will rain down onto the lower ones. Oh, yeah. So you really want to make sure you get the top off. And then, I mean, the odd one comes up now and then, but once the tree is established, no, they're all gone now, because I've done a lot of, of picking. And uh, in spring, almost every day, because there are new ones. And, and if they come out right away, I take the whole tip out. And it doesn't mind, it comes back and, and then it's clean. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's quite a job to do it every year, but, but that's what I do, and that seems to work for me. A bit more work, but if I, in the end, get, get uh, more clean peaches, that's fine. I had fabulous asparagus this year, lots and lots of it. It was really good, um, but this, this is finished now, of course. But that was good, and... Uh, my artichokes, I gave them too much nitrogen. Look at the leaves, I know, poof, they're exploding. Uh, but I had already five really big ones, so that was pretty good. And there are lots more coming. And those come up every year? Yeah, it's the strangest thing. In every book it says two, four, two to four years in one space, and you yeah. have to, I have them here 28 years. Oh my, they look and good. And they're doing well. And how do you eat those, Anne? Well, they're cooked. Do uh, you steam them and cook them for well, quite a while, actually? Yeah. I have a, I do it in my pressure cooker for 20 oh. minutes. And then you plug the leaves off, dip them in some nice dip, and suck them out. And at the end, the core is the best, the heart. <laughs> mm, yummy. Sounds <laughs> Very good. good. Yeah. And at the moment, I need to eat all these things because I just found out I have a potassium deficiency. So artichokes have a lot of potassium, bananas, potatoes. So that's what I'm focusing on at the moment. Very good. Yep. So, uh, let's talk about your Cape gooseberry, because thanks to you, uh, oh. I know myself and a lot of people in the garden club have them now. Yes. Yeah. So what I normally try to do, last year I overwintered uh, that one was it's the second year see how crabby it is it doesn't really work yeah uh, because the whole pot is just full of roots oh yeah and they want to spread them. their wings and then go and mm -hmm. so the second year i mean they are perennial after all you can could do it but in a pot it's really not an outside of course it will die it's too cold yeah so what i do i take always new plants which reseed themselves they are somewhere coming up Oh, I've got lots of little ones, by the way, if somebody wants some. Come and see Anne. And um, <laughs> so I plant the new ones that are coming up in larger pots and pamper them. And then in, in fall, uh, I try to get them into a really large pot. Mm -hmm. And then I put them in my studio and overwinter them in there. Yeah. And then in spring, they have a kickstart. And... Mind you, over winter, they produce the odd one already. Mm -hmm. But uh, see, this is a new plant from last year, and that one too. And yeah, look how big it is. You see the difference. I yeah. mean, it really makes a difference, yeah. And they're just so good, oh, and so good for delicious. you. Yeah. But the thing is, of course, the larger the pot, the better. Mm -hmm. Because they really want to spread their roots out. And you have to feed them now and then. In the pot, they can't go yeah. and pick their own stuff. So. And if they're in a really big pot, because mine's in a really big pot, it's it's hard to move it then, because yeah, I have well, to bring mine it. into my house, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's my so, problem, too. It's a juggle. It's a juggle. So uh, They're worth it, though. I always need some male assistance to get them in the studio. Yeah. But that's okay. And yeah. since I have hardly any paintings left in my studio. I can keep the curtain open so they would get enough light. Excellent. Yeah. And that's, yeah. Yeah, that's they're good. good. Yeah, this one looks, oh, it's amazing. Yeah. And see what, what you want on these. That's important. The shorter the distance here, the better. Mm. Because then you have a lot more fruit setting. Right. Sometimes 
I had it a few times. They were very long, the distances. Yeah. To, that's not good. But I still haven't figured out why it happens. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, but this is how it should be, close together. And then you get a lot more fruit. Yeah, looks good. But that one looks good, and that one looks good too. Yeah, it does. Okay. I had this uh, uh, coming up by itself, in a, and I put in a small pot. And yesterday I put in a larger pot. So this will be the one that I will definitely overwinter. Right. Yeah. But it's already going quite nicely, so it's not have to has to pop up a little more because transplanting they don't really like it. But it's 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 all right. It's coming back. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's good. good. And then I have, of course, my cannabis production. Yes. My medicinal cannabis. And I'm becoming quite an expert on it. I've studied all the healing properties and what you can do with it. And it's really a wonderful healing plant. Yes. And um, so I'm a bit of an expert now. That's yes, and just, I, just for our viewers, this, this plant here uh, doesn't have a lot of THC. It's no, more CBD low, for the healing. Very yeah. low THC and the high, very high CBD, CBD which you want, oil. which is the healing agent. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they need both to activate each other. So you need a little bit of, of the THC, yeah. which is can't do without. But that doesn't matter. No. And the thing is, if you, uh, it's interesting. If you would have a high THC plant uh, and would just uh, use the raw leaves, and I put always a handful of leaves in my smoothie, uh, it doesn't make you high, even if it's because the THC is only activated when it's heated, so when mm. people smoke it or when it's cooked or, or whatever. Right. But uh, when it's raw, it doesn't. It's a THCA, actually, which doesn't. So you're a happy doesn't. gardener for other reasons. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's really, I was, thanks God, I was able already to help quite a few people yeah. uh, with pain control and all kinds of stuff. So that's why I'm doing it uh, for myself too. I mean, it did miraculous things for me. Uh, that's really, really good. But uh, I wanted to learn everything there is, and there is a ton to learn. And there's also still more research to be done yeah. because they have discovered now about 300 uh, properties in those plants, 300 already, but there are more. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just amazing what this plant contains. And it's beautiful. Oh, the terpenes, and I mean, it's, it's such such an amazing plant. But you have to know what you're doing because you can make mistakes too. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm studying all these books to, to know what I'm doing. Yeah. And so I'd be able to help the old person. Now and then, Perfect. It's really nice. Yeah. Okay. Tell yeah. us about your giant. Are these the Kelsies? Yeah, it's a Kelsey. Uh, no, uh, yeah, no? Kelsey. Kelsey, yeah. Yeah. But they are sick this year. Look at them. I mean, they have never been like this, and I don't know what's going on. They still look big to me, Anne, but I, how big should no, they be? No, but I mean, look at the leaves. I yeah, mean, yeah. They're dying away. They must have a fungus, or, or I don't know what it is. They hmm. should be green and big and, and lush, and, and I just don't understand. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. And, and this is your little greenhouse where you start things? That's where I start all my seedlings in spring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I have a, a fan heater, and I don't heat it, but I can keep the frost out. Right. And then from my seeds, I have these heating pads underneath the yeah. pots to keep the soil warm. Now, what seeds do you save? Um, uh, Benita told us about how she saves her tomatoes. I know you save a lot of tomatoes, but oh, what other seeds do you save? Well, I, everything. Yeah. Well, beans, of course, yeah. peas, uh, tomatoes, peppers, Cape gooseberries, well, not anymore because yeah. I have yeah, big cuttings. But, um, yeah, and I even have once uh, tried um, beets. Yeah. Uh, by accident, I let one in, and the second year it would flower. Uh -huh. And I said, oh, let's see what happens. And next year, hundreds of beets came up <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. So it does obviously work. Hmm. And, uh, but, and I normally just buy some, some yeah. seeds, but uh, it would work actually. Mm -hmm. So I've tried it. So that, that's. Yeah. It. And I know you, d you dry out your seeds probably just the same way I do. You just dry them out and then well, put them in a bag with a desiccant thing in there. Yeah. Well, they have to be really, really, really dry. dry. 
yeah. are really dry. And I always use these little dry packs from mm -hmm. from uh, things we get. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but it's the same with the with the big onions. When they are ready, which is normally end of September or so, then they would be when the greens fall down and get mm -hmm. really grayish, then and you harvest them. And the last few months, you don't want to water them anymore because they want to be drier. Mm -hmm. But then you really have to hang them upside down and dry them, cure them for a long time. Because if they are not 100% cured, they won't last at all. They start to rot from inside. Mm. And I found sometimes they make a double onion. Uh -huh. you know, sometimes yeah. onions do that too. They do it too. And those rot immediately almost. So that doesn't really, I don't know why. Hmm. Okay. But uh, if it's just a single one, I normally use these little mash bags, you know, where you buy lemons yep. in and pick, make a hole in there, and put the greens down and hang them up and dry them. Mm -hmm. And then, but I mean, this is not a, not a keeper by December right. or so. So they are done mostly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, then what of else course are you I keep my potatoes. Right. Well, I know last year we covered them over with plastic. So do you keep them all in the dirt over the winter? Well, I normally would, but I cannot do that here. Yeah. Because my water table is very high. Uh, and they would sit in water and they would rot. I mean, Gary has a very dry garden. He has good drainage. He can mm -hmm, do it. Mm -hmm. But I can't. I have to take them out. And then I put them in my little root cellar. Okay, please tell us about this because yeah, well, new gardeners I mean, are going to be wondering how to keep things. Well, I mean, it's a bit of a mess in here. But, we don't care, Anne. But We're friends. Uh, you see, this is my <laughs> this is my root cellar. Okay, so you just have a big it's box? It's a big wooden box. Yeah. And it's lined again with cardboard. Mm -hmm. And I put some peat moss in. And then I put my potatoes in. And, and do you layer it with peat moss? Uh, I used to, um, but then the peat moss needs to be a little moist, okay. not completely dry because it would dry them out too much. Uh -huh. So, but if it's a little bit too moist, then they rot. So it's tricky. So last year I didn't bury them. I just put a load of peat moss around and put them in the middle. And then of course there's a lid yep. and then when it gets cold, which, I mean, it's almost outside here. Yeah. Then I cover it with blankets so they wouldn't freeze. And that, and that works for you. And you well. just keep potatoes in there, hey? Well, I used to put uh, potatoes, carrots, and beets. Yeah. But carrots and beets can stay, stay in, the in the ground quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, that's what I do. So uh, carrots, and I normally just take them out of the ground when I want to eat them. Yeah. So they're okay if they can stay. Great. I mean, if it gets very, very cold, you might want to cover them up because. Yeah, yeah. But a little frost doesn't really, doesn't really matter. But this box works really well. Great. And it's only I have to watch temperature. If it goes a lot below zero, then I put blankets around. Yeah, yeah. And cover it, so it wouldn't. Yeah, I just keep my stuff in the in a cardboard box. The things yeah. that my squash in a. Yeah. With with layers of newspaper in the garage. Yes. And that works. Yeah, my really garage well. is of course ice cold. So yeah, yeah. Uh, it they might. Yeah, mine's attached to the house, so it's a little different. Yeah. It's different. So different ideas for different yeah. different situations but for this, people. Uh, yeah, it works quite well. I've done it for years. Yeah. Unfortunately, the wood is deteriorating. <laughs> I probably have to put a new board inside. This yeah. is not so well. Nothing lasts forever, including no. myself. Hey. Well, none of us do, hun. But you're doing a good job. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, Kiwi. Uh, yeah. This year I won't have a lot. I'm not quite sure how this works but the thing is I had to really prune them dramatically last year I had to cut a lot out of yeah. old wood and so I had to make a lot of new wood and that's why I don't have so many on uh, last year I had about 900 which oh was, was a good one <laughs> yeah. yeah and they were huge big 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 really good year last year but this year is not well it's, it's enough for me but not yeah. not as many yeah. but that's okay Next and year, you'll probably have a good year, hey? Because probably, of, yeah. yeah. But see, when I harvest them in late November or so, I mean, they need to have a certain degree of ripeness, uh, but not soft, of course. They don't yeah. get soft on the tree. They're still hard. But at least you have to sacrifice one late in, in November and cut it in half and see how the little 
spitz look, and if they're still brown, they need to stay longer. They have to be black. Mm. But when they're black, they're okay. And then I pick them before it gets really cold. They can tolerate three to four below. They even get a little sweeter when they get a little frost. <laughs> but if it gets more, they, they, they're gone. So yeah. you have to watch temperature in November, and when it gets too cold, you have to pick. Pick them then. You you keep them in the house in and the box? No. You I keep, keep them, them in, down in... there in my crawl space. Oh. And I have a huge wire box with small wires so Mousy wouldn't get in. Yeah. And then I use these egg cartons, these square ones. Oh, yes. And stack them like eggs, ah, like eggs okay. in, in that box. And they last always into May. Wow. Five, five, six months. And this is a cool room. Well, it's, down, it's downstairs. Oh, okay. Just in crawl space. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can show you. You see, I have them higher on some little pallets so they wouldn't be totally on the ground sometimes when it gets moist. That's a big box there, and it holds about the whole load. And whenever I need kiwi, I take a bunch out. I always have a basket full uh, inside in room temperature, so they slowly ripen a little easier. But when I really want to have them ripe, I put uh, five, six, seven in a bag with an apple, seal it three, four days, and then they're ripe. Huh. Because the apple would ripen them. And uh, then by, by spring, they slowly get soft by themselves and, and ripen by themselves. But it's uh, such a nice winter crop. I have fresh fruit all winter. It's really fantastic. And somebody is eating them. Oh, yeah. And I think it's yeah. this stupid... The romaine that I, that I gave Anne it's to try. It's terrible uh, sparrows. They, oh. they pluck on the greens and eat well, the Well, you greens. need those little baskets that Ed uses. And I have so many sparrows in my garden. It's yeah. just a nightmare. So and this is the other tomato house. OK. And, uh, oh, I see you got rid of your peas. Those, tell us about how the success you had with, with peas kind of off season. Well, growing them in the greenhouse. Well, no, greenhouse was fine, but I normally don't do greenhouse. It was just put just a few on the side there. And before the tomatoes grew in, I said, oh, just have fun. greens. You can use yeah, the pea greens yeah. for a salad. But then I let them grow, and they, they produced quite well. And the tomatoes, when they had to go in, they were not happy. It's like, who is this? Get out of here. It's our house. But uh, eventually, uh, I pulled them out. They were done. But yeah. the normal peas, which I have there, they are, look how crappy they are. Well, they look good to me. you got lots of peas no, there. Too no, short? they should be double the height. I I'm going to give you some of mine. Mine are so tall, they blew over. They went like well, that's how to they six or seven feet this tall. Area, it's crazy. It doesn't work. I mean, this area. You can tell they are not happy, and it's because of oh, the tree that getting tree all the kills everything. Yeah, look the blueberries, big, smaller, smaller, very small. Ah, uh, the closer it's robbing your to water. the tree, it takes everything out, and they're poisonous. And the whole garden is full of roots. Yeah, and it's getting worse every year because that baby feeds on my water and my nutrients. It grows like crazy. And it's really, really killing my garden. Yeah. It's really bad. And the sparrows are giving you a hard time. I see you've got all your old disco CDs up here trying to scare away the birds. Well, you know, when the berries are ripe, the starlings come in 100 at a time, and then everything is right. gone. And so this is uh, working. Oh, good. Yeah, that is working. That uh, blueberry bush with the yellow leaves. Yeah, that, one, that isn't happy either. But I know why, because uh, I didn't fertilize them, and uh, Gary told me, you have to fertilize them, and I didn't, so probably that's why. Uh, and the Gary you keep mentioning is uh, Gary from our garden yes, club, who's yes. a great gardener, too. But we should go is... and get his garden on film, I think. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> I mean, uh, I have now uh, given them some fertilizer, and some of the leaves are turning green again. But it was far too yellow. It didn't have enough nitrogen. So. Uh. But they're producing good, and they're okay. Yeah. Even the little one is trying hard. But yeah. you can tell, the closer it gets to the tree, the smaller they mm -hmm. get. And it's the same with, the only thing that doesn't seem to mind is the onions. I don't know. Yeah, the they, usual. They, they look okay. Well, tell us about your, um, 
what you've got over here. Oh, you're, you're... this is this is embarrassing almost. What's this? This is, this is really, really crazy. You know, this thing is so funny. From my neighbor, she had uh, the black kale, which I wanted to grow. She had some plants extra, we thought, and I transplanted them. That one is okay. That's what it should be. And yeah. this one came out like this. That's the sprouting uh, that's broccoli the sprouting or something. That's sprouting broccoli. Yeah. It's supposed to be a kale, but so... Well, lucky you. Now you got broccoli. Yeah, but look at these enormous leaves. This is not right. It's oh. far too big. <laughs> Again, it has too much nitrogen, <laughs> obviously. It's all leaves. My yeah. Goodness. But it's definitely a broccoli, so that's fine. Yeah. Oh, by the way, this is actually one thing, other thing that you should maybe know. Yep. Uh, remember we had this... Uh, um, What's the fellow's name? Was it was it Glenn? The the, the photographer. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, he had these uh, giant. Uh, um, Talk to Ed, hun. He had yeah. these giant, <laughs> uh, uh, not onions, uh, shallots. Oh said. yes. You know these really big ones. Yeah. And he gave me seeds, and I planted some last year, and then I had some really good ones, and I kept. A couple to put in the ground and they are of course now flowering because those obviously don't work from from bulbs we I normally put sets in from shallots mm -hmm. but in this case you have to seed them and I'm a bit late with those but I think they might eventually come they look good but those are the ones from from last year ah uh -huh. they are going into seeds now mm -hmm. which I mean don't need that many seeds of course but I thought well just to keep them alive because this is such a good variety yeah and they are really really good keepers they last a long time uh, better than onions actually very wow. good so that's a good one i can recommend that and uh, if somebody needs seeds i still have lots so, okay i mean it's too late now but yeah. uh, for the next spring right um, yeah this is a really really good one. Oh, ho, ho. so that's what mine's supposed to so look like that's what they are yes okay this is the german filter crowd and it's a cabbage can go up to 40 pounds uh, some of you might have seen it i had certain years i had it at the sandwich fair and it makes a big cone and this is actually too low because they can grow even taller and see it's forming the cone now and oh, yeah. uh, this is grown in Germany in the uh, Stuttgart area huge uh, fields plantations of, of that stuff and it's grown only for the sauerkraut industry because it's the best cabbage for sauerkraut it's mild and a very very lovely flavor so yeah, that's my my German filter. And, and you make fabulous sauerkraut, I must I say. I make very good sauerkraut. Yeah. Best I've ever had. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, it's very good. So this is my sauerkraut uh, production. <laughs> to yeah, be, very to good. Be, I hope. And so I cover those because of the butterflies, of course. But it's a bit tricky because they grow so big, and sometimes they bend down because they can't get high enough yeah <laughs> so, yeah I mean sometimes when they're getting really big and I take it off and, and let them let them do their thing yeah but as long as I can I want to get keep these butterflies out because uh, and they still get in somehow sometimes and mm -hmm. make these ugly green worms Ugh. yeah yeah but this is but aren't they, they look good aren't they enormous yeah I mean, mine's wow. not that big it's just, but it's doing it's pretty just good. unbelievable. But I should, I have actually in the beginning tied a few, should do that again maybe. Yeah, I did that to uh, mine. I tied tie it up them the other again day. So they would be a little more Protect together. Protect the yeah. top, yeah. And actually these leaves, I mean, they're almost too good to throw away. But you can't really do much with them. I <laughs> chop them up for the compost. But uh, one of my friends said, oh, uh, when I make a big roast, I would like to line the pan with this. <laughs> and that's what she did. Oh, and it neat. gives a nice flavor to, to the roast or whatever. I don't know. I don't eat meat. But but uh, she liked a few of those every year because she wanted to line her, her frying pan. pan with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, last last two times when I had it at the sandwich fair, 
I mean, I took the whole cabbage out with roots, and we that was quite a job, and we transported them in a large bucket uh, to the fair, and then it was sitting in a water bucket so the roots could still, uh, so wouldn't dry out. And of course it had all these big leaves around, not all of them, I trimmed some off, but most of because it looks so beautiful, like looks like a big rose. Yeah. And then after the fair, I said, "What am I going to do with all these leaves?" And some guy was there. Oh, my goats would like to eat them, so he took them for his goats. That's oh, great. Good. Yeah. At least somebody could eat them. Oh, you know what I'm doing with my beans this year? You're letting them grow this I way. I tried to grow them <laughs> over there. Yeah, because that really might hang down. It sure. Might, it might be a, a good thing, but I have to tell them where to go because sometimes they just go They in. get unruly, don't they? I yeah. do that with mine too. There you go, my dear. Yeah. Oh, no, they know. look good. But good looking these, potatoes. These grow extremely high and yeah. And I I had them one year they were so I couldn't reach them because I can't go on a on a ladder anymore on a stool. So I thought I let them go not so high but train some this way maybe. A spell. It's an experiment, I don't know. Yeah. But I said I'm gonna try, maybe. And That's they are already cool. going. So yeah. Maybe. Well, that's a good yeah. idea. Where would you like to go to next? And you want to talk potatoes? about your potatoes? Yeah, you see. Yeah, these potatoes, there's something not right. Those are really lush and green, and those are yellowish. I mean, it's a different kind, but still, this is my, my siglinda here. But they are too yellow, aren't they? That's, that's just something lacking something. Mm. I probably didn't give them enough uh, nitrogen. They got potassium a lot. Because every winter, when I know which bed I'm using for potatoes, I chop all my banana peels very small, and they go on, on the bed all winter long. Because right. that's a lot of potassium in, in the peel. But I probably should have given them some, some other stuff too. Yeah. So poor well, things. Not happy. Well, Sorry. Yeah, maybe yeah. maybe they'll produce fine anyway. though. But I mean every year. So, and look at this. This is my Brussels spout. They're not looking right, don't they? They're, they're I don't know. I have to wonder if they are just a bit early. You they're, know? They're all open. Yeah, well, here's some that aren't, but. Nah, I don't know. See, mine, I only just put mine in, and they're like a little start. They're this tall. Yeah, this yeah. is worse, too. But they sold the plants, so I said, ah, I'm going to try. Yeah. But um, this should be later. I think, I think that may have been it. It's too early. It's yeah. just too early for too them. Early. Yeah. And this is my last remaining garlic here. I just saw a bug that I need to kill, yeah. so I'm going to do that. Yeah, something something is very different this year, that's for sure. Oh, no. It's okay. Oh. I thought I saw asparagus beetle, but it's a ladybug, so we'll leave her alone. <laughs> no, and these are finished. So what's I, in here? What's this? Oh, that was broccoli, but it's oh. gone. It's finished. Here, let me get on the other side there. Mm. Will this not come up like that, though? Won't it keep going? It does, yeah, mix, yeah. mix to the new ones. And this is just a regular broccoli? Uh -huh. Yeah, not a sprouting one. No, but I you know, the sprouting ones are all right because they'll go right through the winter. Yeah, I know, you know. but yeah. last year my sprouting one didn't produce any sprouts all winter long, nothing. I, just I've started a whole bunch of sprouting, uh, purple sprouting broccoli. I'll, if they all come up, I'll, I'll give you some if you like. One, one. One, plenty. okay. One is plenty. Yeah, but see, they make a new little... New little crop. So yep. that's good. No, it looks um, good. And this <laughs> this is that, that uh, candy tomato. Oh, yes. A little, a little yellow one, which is so yep. sweet. Sweet like candy, really. And they look I good. let it trail. Mm -hmm. And it recedes itself. It, it comes back every year. I gave about, about oh, 300 plants away yes, this year. I, I mean, remember. Oh, they're coming up everywhere. And I, I know that you put your, your grate down there because this tends to grow along the ground and that keeps well, them off the ground? Well, I just keep them a little A little higher? The, yeah, a yeah. Little, yeah. And are these your watermelons? Is that what you were it's telling us? They're my watermelons. And actually, I had them years ago and I got the seeds from back east from some, I can't even remember where. And they are very small, round watermelon with the most amazing flavor. They're called Small Shining Light. And I didn't have them anymore. I, I thought I 
that was a few years ago. And then this year I found an old package with seeds. There were two or three seeds, and I said, oh, uh, that was the water. Um, they're probably dead, and I put them in, and they all came up. So it's a bit late, but I'm trying, maybe. We're going to have more heat. Maybe they'll do all right. Maybe. Yeah. I just put them out uh, last week, and they doubled their size already. So Good stuff. they might be OK. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. Great. Is there anything else in the garden that you'd like to tell us about? But, uh, well, I have lots of raspberries this year. Yes. Yes, they good. look good. Um, and I know about this scary plant. That's oh, what a mustard plant. This mustard is green. Mustard green. It is so spicy. Yeah, I can't handle it. It's, it's beautiful. Bit, yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> and the bees love it. Yeah. They so always leave a few, but then I, I take it out so, because if they spread thousands of seeds everywhere. Uh, so, But I like one leaf in a bowl of salad to give mm -hmm. it a little, but they are, boy, are they hot. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. Too hot for, for, for me. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it makes you cry when you eat the leaves. It's really. Yeah. Uh, but as a spice in, in, a, in a, one a little leaf, bit. In a, well, that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Tell us about your Polish pole beans. Well, it's a it's a funny story. About fifteen years ago, or so my my friend from across the road, he, he used to be an electrician, and he worked one day at the Polish family's house, mm -hmm. and they gave him lunch and gave him beans. And he said, "Oh my God, I've never eaten such good beans," and they said, "Well, our." Grandmother brought them over from Poland. It's a 140-year-old variety from Poland. And he, uh, they gave him seeds. And I got the seeds from them. And I grow them ever since. They are absolutely delicious. And they go on and on producing. And those leaf colors are normal. They are yellowish. That, mm. That's normal. And uh, I have oodles of seeds if somebody wants them, because it's a very, very good variety. And I can recommend it. And if somebody wants them, I got tons. Great. So, and I always keep new seeds every year. But yeah. uh, bean seeds and pea seeds, they last for many years. Yeah. They're, they're, then they're easy to, they're easy to dry do. out and yeah, store. Yeah. Easy yeah. To do. yeah. Well, so, and? Yeah, that's a good one. And also, yeah. what you want to have with beans <laughs> is savory, yeah. summer savory. They go together, they love each other. And you can't cook beans without it. Yes, I'm trying it this year. Absolutely, because I'll have to beans be. this year. <laughs> yes, yeah. And they like to grow together. So yeah, yeah. no, that's that's and great. And it reads seeds itself. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have a nice little patch of it too, thanks yeah. to you. Oh, it's so. such a lovely. I mean, I've got also the winter savory, which is perennial, but this the, the summer savory is annual, mm -hmm. and it has more flavor. It's better. Yeah, good. Yeah. So these are a few things that. Uh, I have to have. Yeah, <laughs> I can't cook without. Yeah. It's the same with my lovage. I can't cook without lovage. That's <laughs> another one. Yeah, no, that's a good one. It's I have that just, too. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, you have a wonderful garden, uh, Anne. Thank you so much for, oh, for showing it to us. Sure. We, we really appreciate and it. I'm I sure just, the Garden Club people will be happy to see you. Well, and they, they haven't been here for quite a while. Yeah, it's been uh, yeah. quite a few years since yeah, Ed taped, taped you and those but who don't I'm visit. Still, yeah. I'm still here, and I still want to share my seeds and whatever I have too much of. Absolutely. And, and hopefully the Garden Club will be able to meet soon, and we'll see all your wonderful yeah. vegetables in the parlor show I in the fall. I going to we happen. Hope. We don't know yet. We'll have to see well, what's going to happen. The worst part is that the sandwich fair is yeah. Oh, yeah. in 151 years. The first time the fair isn't there. Yeah. This is a nightmare. Yeah. It's so it's sad. too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks, Anne. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you.